Let's look at an object that follows this curvy path. When the object is here, it has a velocity tangent to the path. Since it is moving on a curve, it also has a centripetal acceleration, v squared over r towards the center. I mean towards the center of this circle, the circle that matches the curvature right over here. So the centripetal acceleration is perpendicular to the tangent direction. It goes along a radius, so we can also say it goes along the radial direction. So we can call this acceleration centripetal acceleration or radial acceleration. The velocity can only be tangent to the path, I mean, if the velocity is not zero. This means the centripetal or radial acceleration is always perpendicular to the velocity. Again, I mean, if they are not zero. So what about the thing we used to say, you know, if an object is speeding up, the acceleration and the velocity are in the same direction. If an object is slowing down, the acceleration and the velocity are opposite. Well, that is still true. It just involves a different acceleration. Say, when the object is here, it is speeding up. This acceleration that is in the same direction as the velocity would be tangent to the path. And we can call that tangential acceleration. If the object is slowing down, the tangential acceleration will be opposite to the direction of the velocity. If the object's speed does not change, then the tangential acceleration would be zero. So an acceleration can have two components. The centripetal or radial acceleration is responsible for the direction change, which means uh, if an object is moving on a curve, then there is a centripetal or radial acceleration. And then the tangential acceleration is responsible for the speed change. If there is speed change, there is tangential acceleration. For example, when the object is here, it has a velocity tangent to the path, and it is speeding up. Since it is moving on a curve, there is a centripetal or radial acceleration going towards the center. Now the center is that way, so the centripetal acceleration. And because it's speeding up, it has a tangential acceleration that's in the same direction as the velocity. So the tangential acceleration goes that way. This means that the total acceleration will be the sum of these two vectors. So I can do the parallelogram method. In this case, it happens to be a rectangle, and the diagonal is the sum. So that's the total acceleration. Now the total acceleration may not point exactly in that direction because uh, depending on the magnitude of the tangential and centripetal accelerations, what we have may be like this. Tangential acceleration, there's a lot of speed change, but uh, the object's moving slowly on a gentle curve, so the centripetal acceleration is small, and therefore the sum will point this way. That's the total acceleration. Or you can have a small speed change. The tangential acceleration is small, but the object is moving fast on a steep curve, so the total of acceleration would go like that. So the direction of the total acceleration can be any direction in between the tangential and centripetal acceleration. It all depends on the magnitude of these two components. And remember this hilly road problem we did in the 25th forces video lesson? This cart could have speed change. For example, at the bottom of the dip, the driver could have stepped on the brakes to slow down. Therefore, the car could have a tangential acceleration going back that way. There's a reason why I did not have to bother to mention this when we worked on this problem. 
This problem asks for the normal force, which is in the vertical direction. So it only has to do with the vertical centripetal acceleration towards the center. The horizontal tangential acceleration does not matter. By the way, what force do you think has to do with the horizontal tangential acceleration? It is friction. At the very bottom of the hill, the road is leveled over here, just right here. So the only horizontal force that can act on the car is friction. So if the car is slowing down with the tangential acceleration going back that way, the friction must also go back that way to provide this tangential acceleration.